I'm gonna find. And I'm gonna kill. Every last one of them. Welcome back to Game Gentlemen. This week we're doing something a little different, and instead of putting together our usual list-based video, we thought we would dive in and give you a review of The Last of Us Part 2. Getting a bit of housekeeping out of the way, given the fact that I'm posting this review a week after the game has come out, it's pretty clear that I was not given a review copy by Sony. I purchased The Last of Us Part 2 with my own money, and have experienced the story at the same time as everyone else. I've tried to make the review completely spoiler free, but I will be discussing my thoughts on a particular element of the game and how I would change it at the end of the video. So if you haven't played the game, the first section is safe for you to watch, but if you care about spoilers, jump out after the review is finished. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the review. The Last of Us Part 2 takes place several years after the events of the first game, we see an older Joel and Ellie settled in Jackson, Wyoming, having become part of the community run by Joel's brother Tommy and his wife Maria. Life seems pretty stable within the community, and it seems the most excitement to be had, outside of the politics and gossip of a small town, is when out on patrols, clearing small groups of infected, and finding supplies. The real story begins when Ellie's world is rocked by a devastating event, and she sets out to seek justice. The game takes us to a crumbling Seattle which is in the midst of a war between two factions that threaten to tear each other apart, or while dealing with the ever-present threat of the infected. The graphics in this game are amongst some of the best I've seen on the PlayStation 4. I played the title on a standard HD monitor and PS4 Pro, so even though I did not get to take advantage of the 1440p resolution, I was amazed at the details offered up in the game. From the impact of gunshot wounds, the physics of shattering glass fridges and vending machines, to the individual handwritten notes, some of which featuring two different pen colours and handwriting styles as we read notes passed between characters we'll never get to meet. Environments are derelict, and Naughty Dog brings us back to a world where nature continues to take over, as man is no longer the dominant species on the planet. There are of course the video game tropes of convenient waist-high obstacles which you can use for cover in the game's many stealth and firefight sections, but the addition of tall grass is one of the few iterations to the game's stealth mechanics, and allows for new pathways through or around enemy encounters, even if it's hard to tell sometimes if you're obscured enough until you hear that ominous you're about to get spotted audio cue. The facial animations are incredibly impressive in the game as well, and while the characters are stylized enough that you know you're not looking at real people, and your brain is not trying to bridge the uncanny valley, you can see real pain and emotion in the characters' faces, and it helps to solidify the intensity and desperation that you are meant to feel throughout the story. Gameplay itself has not changed significantly from the first title. While Naughty Dog have made some tweaks to how Ellie moves throughout the environment, with the additions of prone stance, jumping, and traversing using ropes to reflect a character who is lighter on her feet, you still rely heavily on crouching to sneak around, relying on listen mode to pick up threats you can't yet see, sneaking around enemies to stealth attack, and then running for cover when you eventually get spotted and it all goes to hell. The addition of new enemy types such as dogs who can track your scent and stalkers who barely show up on your listen mode, hide around corners and constantly flank the player are a welcome challenge. But I found the shamblers to not be that significantly different to bloaters from the first game and as long as you're well enough equipped with some heavy firepower and an explosive or two never really posed a challenge outside of their first encounter when you don't quite know how to handle them. In our video covering the state of play for The Last of Us Part 2, I mentioned that Neil Druckmann teased an even scarier enemy that you would have to wait until the game was out to see, and I mentioned that I thought it was probably bears. I won't spoil the surprise for those of you who haven't played, but I will tell you that thankfully, it's not bears. Scavenging and crafting are still core mechanics, and while it's easy to drain your precious resources in combat, especially if you let off a few poorly aligned panic shots and don't take your time and aim for the head, playing on normal difficulty with no additional accessibility tweaks, I never really felt a sense of scarcity and could quickly recover even after I had drained most of my ammo in a combat situation. There were plenty of times throughout the game that I could not pick up any additional resources because I had maxed out the number of crafted items as well as maxed out the ingredients needed. The game's extensive accessibility options are to be absolutely commended, with differing settings for audio, visual and mobility tweaks hopefully being something that brings this game and the experience of this story to as many people as possible. The story of The Last of Us Part 2 is where Naughty Dog really shines. From the outset, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that this story is not for everyone, and I can see where some people didn't enjoy particular moments in the game. 
For me though, this is a story about grief, pain, anger, and regret. It's last conversations, heated moments, quiet reflection, and humanizing storytelling. In a world like what we are presented in The Last of Us Part 2, not everything is black and white, not everyone is all good or all bad, everyone is doing what they can to survive, and this is something that the writers have really tried to convey throughout the entire story. There are some very intense and heavy moments throughout the story, action sequences are fast and had my heart pumping, stealthy sequences can be very stressful, but it's all balanced with periods of quiet reflection, heartfelt and human connection, and yes, in some cases, real joy. In a very bleak and depressing world, I found myself smiling in moments and experiencing the brief periods of happiness and hope that the characters would feel. And that in itself is one of The Last of Us Part 2's greatest achievements. The Last of Us Part 2 is an incredible game and a terrific way for Naughty Dog to see out the end of the PlayStation 4's lifespan. I look forward to seeing what the studio can do with the next generation of consoles and hope that we see them exploring new IPs and bringing us more unique and rich worlds. In regards to whether we rate it or hate it, I think it's pretty clear that we rate it. If you've been avoiding this game for any reason related to the leaks or things you've heard on Reddit or otherwise, I seriously encourage you to give this game a try and judge for yourself. If you enjoyed the first game, you've probably already dove in and I hope you're getting the same out of it as I did. That's the end of our spoiler free section of this video. If you haven't played the game yet, I would recommend ending the video here. But before you go, if you enjoyed our video, please leave a like or a comment below. This is our first review on the channel, so your feedback is really appreciated. And as always, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our content. If you have played the game or don't particularly care about spoilers, stick around as I will be discussing the one thing I would change about the game. Okay, so you're still with me? Good. I'm not going to use this section of the video to rip into the game despite how many people may feel about what happens to Joel or anything to do with Abby's identity. I think Naughty Dog made a lot of the right decisions and what I would change about the game is a narrative choice but possibly not the one you think. I managed to avoid the spoilers as best I could prior to the launch of the game. I knew something happened with a golf club and that Ellie was setting out on a path of revenge but I actually had a theory that something terrible was going to happen to Ellie herself or to Dina. I had followed the Joel is a ghost slash in Ellie's head theories from the very first PSX trailer, but did not think it would go down the way it did. I also did not see the mid-game switch to Abby coming. I felt I was wrapping up Ellie's story pretty quickly when I made it to the marina and had a brief moment of feeling a little ripped off when all of a sudden I was in Abby's shoes and back to Seattle day one. However, I quickly understood that Naughty Dog were trying to show me Abby's perspective, and while I might start by hating the fact I'm now in control of this character, over the next few hours they would take the time to humanise her in my eyes and make her actions not so black and white. I would imagine they almost wanted me to feel that I would do the same in her shoes. After all, I had no problems with Ellie's revenge quest. And this is where I would make my biggest single change to the game. I wouldn't undo any of the events that unfold in The Last of Us Part 2's story, but I would reverse the order of their gameplay. Right from the first announcement trailer for the game, I would have marketed this game as not a continuation of Joel and Ellie's story, but as an anthology of sorts, showcasing the experience of other survivors in this bleak world, with no indication that we would even see Joel and Ellie in the game as their story was near perfect as a standalone experience. The game would start with Abby's experiences in the WLF, fighting the Seraphites, all the while uncovering the mystery of who Abby is and setting her on her path to Joel and Tommy. It's at that point I would switch gameplay to take control of Ellie and set her on her path for revenge. But by the time players had their final confrontation with Abby, that event would carry a much more complex dynamic as we would have played as this character for a number of hours without having prejudged her for her actions and would have to make the ultimate decision as to whether or not we would kill her or let her go. It's something that I think was missing from the first game, which is the sense of choice. In The Last of Us, players should have had the choice of what actions to take in the hospital at the end of the first game, either sacrificing Ellie for the greater good or saving her life and damning humankind in the process. There would of course be the canon ending of saving Ellie, but the choice should have been given to the player. 
Of course, there would have to be some tweaks as to how the timelines of the existing story pans out, but I think this would carry a greater weight to the events that unfold as you play through as two protagonists, rather than trying to humanise and justify the actions of a character who has done something so heinous that the writers may not have been able to do enough to redeem her by the time you're finished playing. So that's the one change I would make to The Last of Us Part 2. This is just my take on things and does not take away from the fact that this is an incredible game the way it is. I believe we can all have our opinions on how we may do things differently, but I don't support the movement for a petition for Naughty Dog to redo the story in any way. Again, if you liked our video, please hit the like button. If you want to post spoiler-free comments below, we'd love to chat through some of your highs and lows in the game. And if you want to stay up to date with our content, hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications. This has been Game Gentleman, and thanks for watching.